Like if you if you reach the top of the mountain, but your spiritual health, your family, like your physical, your you know your whole life's in total shambles. Well, is that really success? We don't believe so. So what does it take to dominate on YouTube? What do you do when you feel like giving up or you lack vision for what the future can be like? Well, I'm excited because today's episode, we're going to be diving into four key values that will help you not only dominate on YouTube, but create a lasting business that will give you legacy. Now, in today's episode, Sean's going to be breaking down four different values that you definitely need to lean into. Make sure you get your notebook ready because these four values are from the heart. This is really a message of how do you stay consistent, but not just consistently uploading. How do you stay consistent when you feel like quitting? My name is Heather Torres, and you're listening to the Think Media Podcast, the number one podcast where we help you grow your influence with YouTube and then take that influence and grow a high impact and high profit online business. And we deliver a brand new episode every single Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this content on. Now today I'm excited because we're diving into impact. That is a huge part of what we do here at Think. And it's really what makes us stand out in the market that we're in. And I want you to be able to define what is the impact you want to make on your audience. Sean's going to break down four different values to have and how those can help you to dominate on YouTube. All right, let's get into the featured content. Well, hey, welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. I'm so fired up for this particular episode where I'm actually gonna be sharing a session that I shared during the pandemic that really forced me to clarify some of our values, some of our vision at Think Media. It was titled, How to Lead Through Crisis and Dominate the Next Decade. And there's really two big takeaways that I know you're going to get out of this podcast. The first one is in the past episode, we talked about the best way to build a strong audience on YouTube, not just your what, not just your how, but really your why, sharing your core values. And the second thing uh, that I think you're going to get out of this is not just seeing some of the core values that drive think, therefore driving the results and the numbers and the team unity and some of the behind the scenes things, which is the point of this podcast. The second thing is actually potentially getting some pillars that I believe will be strength to you for dominating the next decade. Now that's pretty lofty. Like you might be like, Sean, I'm just kind of exploring YouTube. Like, what do you mean? I'm not even thinking 10 years ahead, but the way we think here at Think Media is we think big. We think about the future, we think about legacy. And so these four core values, I think help us go beyond just trying to make the next viral video or go beyond just trying to get a few subscribers or get a few views and to make us ask a deeper question about you know, what is it we're building over the long haul? And so I hope that out of this episode, you can galvanize some of your own values, maybe benefit from what I believe are key principles to helping you dominate the next decade and to capture a bigger vision for yourself and your brand. Okay, so let's kick it off with these four points. And these are four commitments that we have here at Think Media that I believe have helped us rise to the influence that we have in the industry and will help you in your own niche as well. So this is how to consistently lead through crisis and dominate the next decade. Number one is a commitment to excellence, a commitment to excellence. I believe if you want to win on YouTube, you want to win on business, you want to win as an author or a speaker, you want to win on a podcast, I think you have to have a commitment to excellence. Of course, you could at some point just be experimenting, just starting, just testing things out, but eventually you got to commit to excellence. Um, When a new industry starts, it's about who's first. But once it matures, it's about who's best. That's just a fact of things. So when something new comes along, call it TikTok or even like YouTube shorts, you do have a chance to have some influence if you don't necessarily have, if you will, excellence. You're not the best. You are just first. You got a lot of momentum. But eventually, as an industry matures, it's about who's best. Now, this shouldn't make you feel overwhelmed because you might be like, ah, there's always someone better. Of course, there's always a better athlete, always a better YouTuber, always a better speaker, always a better marketer. Of course, there's always somebody better, but at some point, you cannot compromise on excellence. And I just want to ask you, are you committed to excellence when it comes to your YouTube channel? Are you committed to doing the little things 
well. I think that that's a massive commitment that we need, not just to win today, but to have longevity over the next decade. And I learned this from Brian Tracy, and he said this, The most successful and ambitious people see themselves as capable of being the best. They know that the top 20% of salespeople make 80% of the sales, and they are determined to be among the top group and learn how to sell like the best. Perhaps the most important first step you take in a field of selling, which is what he's referencing is just selling, you could apply this to YouTube, is to make a commitment to excellence. The most important first step is a commitment to excellence, to make a commitment to being the best in your field. Resolve today that you're going to join the top 10% and be the most successful in your industry in terms of earnings. So it's a commitment to excellence. You know, I heard Omar El Takori on the Think Media team define excellence as simply doing the best with what you have. So again, this isn't actually being like, shoot, there seems to be such a large chasm between me and the competition. But a commitment to excellence means a commitment to getting 1% better every day, getting 1% better with every upload. You know, there's a Japanese term called kaizen that we talk about at Think Media a lot, which is our commitment of continuous improvement. And if you want to dominate the next decade, you just got to be constantly improving. I know that sometimes you might feel tired. Sometimes you might feel overwhelmed. And I hope this podcast is valuable to you and always helping you sharpen the saw, sharpen the ax, get better. Wisdom uh, helps you succeed. It helps you go faster by little by little getting better at what you do. But I encourage you, it's not the hacks or the short-term tricks that build high-impact brands and businesses It's about a commitment to mastery and excellence. And what Brian Tracy told us is it's simply actually starting by just making a commitment. You know, I have committed to getting better at running. I'm not great at running. I just went running with uh, Gabe Perez and Melissa Caputo uh, from the Think Team, and I've discovered that they are a lot faster than me. Like, so they're, they're more athletic, they're faster, they have more endurance, but I'm committed to getting better, so it actually just reminded me, oh, shoot, I gotta train more. I got I to gotta rest up more. I got to recover better. I'm going to run more hills. I'm going to actually run out to Red Rock here in Las Vegas and train on some of those trails because my butt got kicked when we were running up these trails up a hill and I realized, man, I'm getting winded pretty quick. I'm committed to excellence. doesn't matter where I am today, but the commitment is I, ke- I want to get a little bit faster tomorrow. I want to get a little bit better tomorrow. And so a couple questions I have for you is what are you committed to being the best in the world at? We'll link up in the show notes our episode on whether or not you should quit YouTube, which was based off of Seth Godin's book, The Dip. And he talked about, at the end of the day, what you want to stick through the dip towards is what you're committed to being the best at. And remember, when we say best, it reminds us of the restaurant in a small town that says the number one best steak in Omaha. Dude, I promise you that there's 32 restaurants that have that exact sign in their window. But when you're in that town, like they are the number one best in that moment, in that world. So you just want to be the best in your world, the best kind of in your niche, 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 your triple niche deep, you know, the best. And and, and as you can carve out your unique positioning, then that can actually help you be excellent in a particular specific area. This will help you on YouTube. So what are you committed to being the best in the world at? It also is probably good to commit to what are you committed to not being the best in the world at? You may have been a part of our journey of changing the branding of our Think Marketing podcast to the Think Media podcast. That was us refining our brand, but on that same journey, we committed to shifting a little bit from being a podcast and a video podcast that's about all things online business and all things social media separate from YouTube But we doubled down and said, you know, YouTube is our thing. And if you separate YouTube from the equation, sure, we could talk about online business, but our best place to talk about it is in the context of YouTube. What am I trying to say? That we're committed to being the best in the world at YouTube and how to build a business around YouTube. And so a small pivot for us here at Think Media was to kind of pivot away from trying to say we're the best in the world at online business, online marketing, and social media. There's so many others in the sea of podcast options and video options, we just wanted to kind of find our smaller niche within a niche. I learned this back when I wrote my book, YouTube for Churches, that all of a sudden I was afraid of writing a book that was that specific. I wanted to write social media for churches and I didn't even want to niche down for churches, although that had been the context I'd been doing social media in. But when I did it, 
boom, I instantly became the best in the world at YouTube for churches. Why? Because zero other people in the world were even talking about it. Like there was nobody, like it was, I was the only author with a book on YouTube for churches. I was the only person positioned to talk about. So you can really actually rise to preeminence and if you will, excellence, the more niched down you get when it comes to clarifying what it is you do on YouTube and in your business and in your overall mission. But number one, commitment to excellence. What are you committed to being the best in the world at? And what are you committed to mastering? What helped me was for a while with Heather Torres and I, especially even in our inner circle program and things we were going through, we still, it's, it's funny because it's a small tweak. We still talk about all the social media platforms and how they relate to YouTube. But for a while, it was even, check this out, even our event growth video in 2020 was called the number one video marketing event for entrepreneurs and business-minded content creators. We're refining our niche mastery. We flipped it. The number one YouTube marketing event for entrepreneurs and business-minded content creators. Small tweak, but it was like, listen, at the end of the day, I know video on a lot of platforms, but like there's so many dang platforms. You want to learn LinkedIn video? Talk to my friend Michaela Alexis. You know, you want to learn Instagram video? Talk to Brock Johnson and learn reels. And I like, we want to go even deeper into our area of specialty, which actually helps me, helps our team say we're committed to mastering YouTube. And listen, those other things matter so much, but they're actually through the lens of YouTube. Another resource for you is don't miss the episode we did with Rory Vaden. And he talks about that clarifying your brand your niche brand, your mastery point becomes the lenses with which you see the world through. So of course we need to talk about email marketing, but we talk about it through the lens of YouTube. We gotta talk about how to host your website and different things like that, build your business online. But it's through the lens of YouTube. For us, we're committed to mastering YouTube. What are you committed to mastering? What are you committed to being the best in the world at? Jeff Bezos said this, a brand for a company is like a reputation for a person. You earn a reputation by trying to do the hard things well. I'm not trying to say that a commitment to excellence is easy, but I am saying that it's worth it. And so what are you committed to doing the hard things well in so that you can earn a reputation in a particular area? That'll help you dominate the next decade. Number two, let's dominate the next decade on YouTube by number two, a commitment to wellness. Now, before you turn off the Think Media podcast, you might be saying, Sean, listen, bro, talk about the algorithm, man. Give me some tips on thumbnails. Give me some tips on, you know, uh, on, on how to hack YouTube views. But I actually really believe that this number two point is one of the most important YouTube success principles and just life and business principles in general, a commitment to wellness. I'm convinced, Steve Jobs said this, that about half of what separates the successful entrepreneurs from non-successful entrepreneurs is perseverance. And here's the thing, friend, you cannot persevere if you burn out. You cannot last for, think about three years from now as you're building your YouTube empire. Think about six years from now as you're building your YouTube empire. If you don't have a foundation of wellness and health, then you're not gonna be able to sustain a pace of building your business brick by brick, moment by moment. Furthermore, you're not gonna be able to be growing in excellence or coming up with your best content, your best titles, your best ideas, your best thumbnails. You're not gonna be able to be your best on camera if you don't have world-class energy. I know that this isn't the topic of this podcast, but it is the topic of this podcast because Business is a game of attrition. YouTube is a game of attrition. You might be slogging it away on YouTube for four years, and you might feel like you've only gotten marginal success. Slow growth, but growth, but you haven't had your breakout moment. If you can sustain and persevere through the hard times, through the valleys, through the obstacles, and you can just get to that other side, the majority of people will have given up but you'll still be standing. And one of the ways you'll be able to do that is because of a commitment to wellness. Here's a question for you. What habits, if changed, would give you more mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical power in your life and business? Like, what habit right now would give you more mental, 
mental clarity, mental energy, ability to come up with good ideas, your next best content idea, spiritual energy. Maybe you're, you're waking up heavy. You're, you're, you're waking up like you got a weight on you of anxiety, spiritual heaviness, emotional, physical. Do you have enough energy to accomplish and create the content, implement the things in business, follow through on your promises, create the things you want to create? I know this is heavy because I have to, I, when I put myself through this, there's habits I need to change. But ask yourself that question because this will help you dominate the next decade and last over the long haul. I want you to hear my heart, Think Media Podcast. We are committed to you winning. Like that's what this podcast is about, is helping you win, helping you reach your goals. And in my opinion, success is not just even just hitting a successful YouTube channel if you lose your health in the process. I don't want you to, to build financial freedom but lose your health freedom because you've fried your adrenal glands on the process from all the stress it took to get where you were trying to get. We want you to not just have short-term success, but long-term success. That's how you build real legacy, and that's impossible without a commitment to wellness. Another question for you. What is your biggest vulnerability personally and in your business? What's your biggest vulnerability? It's like a question to identify your blind spots before they become a problem. You start seeing that, man, it's an evaluation that maybe, hey, if I stay at this pace, something's going to need to, something's eventually got to give. So I'm going to make decisions today before it becomes a problem. You know, when a check engine light comes on in your car, it's telling you to just check the engine. It is not saying your engine is exploding, the pistons froze up, and there's flames coming out of the engine. At that point, you would not need a check engine light. The engine failed at that moment. The check engine light is a warning ahead of time to say, hey, why don't you just go get a tune-up? Hey, it might be time to change the oil so that you don't burn through this oil and seize up the engine. It, hey, it might be some time to make some tweaks. What's your biggest vulnerability? Listen, it might not even be a problem now, but if you think about it now and you're smart now in terms of wellness, then you will be able to not just crush it on YouTube in the next 12 months, but over the next decade because of that foundation. James Altucher said this, don't buy into the 20 hours a day entrepreneur myth. You need to sleep eight hours if you wanna have a focused mind. You know, sometimes I can get a reputation. People see I, I do Rise and Grind on Instagram every day. And uh, to me, Rise and Grind, because as much as I believe in hustle and hard work, I, I'm like the biggest sleep guy you could ever meet. Like I obsess over getting enough sweet sleep, quality sleep, taking naps if needed. Because I'm like, if I don't have a focused mind or the right energy, no good work is gonna come out of me. So I think about the power of sleep. To me, rise and grind is rise and make coffee. Come on, somebody, it's grind the beans. And of course, it means also grind and like be focused, put in the work. But here at our heart coming from Think Media, we are not about hustle culture that's toxic. We are about balance, and we believe in a strong work ethic, but also a strong rest ethic. And that longevity as an entrepreneur and as a YouTube creator, you need both. And here's just the thing of sleep. Listen to this when it comes to sleep. First and foremost, sleep deprivation impairs attention and your working memory. And it also affects other functions, such as long-term memory and decision-making. Partial sleep deprivation is found to influence your attention, especially vigilance. So these are some of the benefits of getting enough sleep. Don't buy into the myth that like, I'm just grinding, I gotta get my YouTube channel going, I'm gonna sleep one hour a day, I'm gonna do this thing. No, like you're gonna be a lot more effective if you have a commitment to wellness. But this is just one area, sleep. Sleep increases fertility, it wards our heart disease, it increases sex drive, it prevents diabetes, it boosts mental well-being, it can slim you, and it boosts immunity. Dude, who, if, it, if someone's telling you you shouldn't sleep, they're wrong. Like, you need to figure out whether you need seven, eight, maybe nine hours a night, and of course there's gonna be those times when you grind a little bit, but I consider that foundational. What habits, if changed for you, would actually help you be more effective, not just in the short term, but over the next decade. Number three is a commitment to service. 
commit to service. Number one's commit to excellence. Number two's commit to wellness. Number three's commit to service. Tony Shea said this, customer service shouldn't just be a department. It should be an entire company. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Cook said this, instead of focusing on the competition, focus on the customer. Wow. You know, on YouTube, it could be really challenging to just worry about what our competition is doing. To just think that YouTube is about views, subscribers, and oh, look at how many views the competition is getting, how many subscribers they have. But did you know that every one of those subscribers is a person? Like every single one of those subscribers is a human. And, and in a way, they are your customer. Because even if they're watching your free content, which you can monetize through ads at a certain point, they're, they're your viewer. So what if you focused and obsessed over your viewer and giving them great content, making deep connections with them, serving them? You know, one of our core values at Think Media is servant leadership, that the greatest leader example that we have is Jesus Christ, and he said he didn't come to be served, but to serve. And he said, actually, the pursuit of greatness is a great thing to pursue, but the greatest among you will be your servant, like serve others. So if you commit to service, and if you think, man, my YouTube channel is in service of other people, it's a whole different perspective than most people's approach to YouTube. If you want to build a real legacy over the next decade and really build not just like a powerful YouTube channel, but a powerful movement and a powerful brand, commit to service. Maya Angelou said it this way, I've learned that people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Can you inject more love, service, gratitude, appreciation in your content? One of the things we do, you know, we, we get a lot of comments on Think Media, and I'll be honest, we can't answer all of them. We get hundreds and hundreds a day. But we do, a couple times a week, a thing called love bombs on the Think Media team, where we block time. We'll, we'll hop on Zoom, we put up a little countdown timer, and we, we do as many comment replies, hearts back to comments, emojis, deep answers. We, we stay anchored in, we are here to serve our community. It's not some just mathematical subscriber number. Every subscriber, is a person. Every person matters, and to the best of our ability, and we make mistakes, and I'm sure we could do better, but the attitude that we are coming from is an attitude of service. Can you commit to service at a higher level when it comes to the content you're creating? Maybe this is a new concept. You're like, bro, like I'm just making like motherhood video. I, don't, I was just like trying to give some tips. Yeah, you're serving people. And the greater you weave in a heart of service, it could be so, so powerful. Our culture is more selfish than ever before, so service stands out. Isn't it true? Have you noticed that our culture is becoming more and more selfish and self-absorbed? So when you serve others, you're going to have a remarkable result over time as your YouTube channel builds a reputation for being committed to service. And don't ever think that this won't help you achieve your goals and your ambitions and your revenue targets. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said, you will get everything in the world that you want if you just help other people get what they want. It's just putting others first, serving them, and then realizing that your income is directly proportional to the amount of value you add to the marketplace, serving others. So define these questions. Who are you committed to serving? Powerful. So know your who. For me, I am not committed to helping women get through menopause. You know what I mean? Like that's just, that's not my gift of particularly how to, to that I can help people. I'm not committed to helping men get a six, six pack abs because I don't got them. I, there's not a lot of tips that I could pass along to help them. Your who helps you even know that person you're called, that person you're uniquely wired to help and to serve. Who are you committed to serving? How could you over deliver value to your community and customers right now? A great question. How could you over deliver value to your community and customers right now? Maybe you're early stage and you don't even feel like your business is taking shape yet. 
How can you just overly deliver value to the one comment that is showing up on your videos, to the two comments? How could you over deliver value to the 50 followers you have on Instagram that you could maybe follow them back or DM them or go deeper with them to just over deliver value, to go out of your way today to serve your community? And then where are you weak and underserving your community right now? Can you double down? One of the things that I've noticed is that as YouTubers get bigger, they stop doing the things they did at first that got them to where they are. Kind of reminds me when you hear about like Taylor Swift, you know, showing up to people's weddings, FaceTiming people, continuing to do what she can't do it for her millions of fans. But like Andy Stanley says, do for one what you wish you could do for all. Uh, For us at Think Media, we fight to just stay anchored in that area of serving people and trying to make those meaningful moments um, of really creating community and not just creating content. And even as I talk about these things, like I feel it, I'm like, man, I got to step up. I'm like, I'm preaching to myself. I'm feeling this myself. How can I take this to another level? Friend, that's why this is just a commitment. It's not that you're always doing it well. I know that I need all these areas, and this podcast is is as just as much for me as it is for you. I want to recommit to wellness today. I want to recommit to excellence today. And number three, I want to recommit to service today. Finally, fourth one, and I hope this is serving you. It's going to be a good decade with these commitments. Number four is commit to mission. Commit to mission. What have you set as a powerful long-term vision, mission, and principles for you, your company, or your YouTube channel. Sean, I have never even thought about it. Well, good, I'm glad you're listening to this podcast. Like, what is your, have you set a long-term vision? Well, how do you even do that? Well, maybe that's, that's actually a great idea. We'll write that down. I'm thinking about that, it'd probably be a good podcast. How do you set a vision? Like you, number one, you probably don't need to take three months to do it, but you might need to take three hours. You might need to take a weekend to really go deep in clarifying your vision. Have you set a mission for your YouTube? Like what's the mission of your YouTube channel? This will give you so much more clarity, so much more direction. It'll help other people know where you're going and even principles. Like if you've predefined your principles, then you know actually how to make decisions a lot quicker when you come up... uh, to wise in the road of which way to go. So it's a predetermination of what your principles are, your mission is, and your vision is, and then it's committing to that mission. You know, our mission here at Think Media is to help 10,000 purpose-driven people create a full-time living doing what they love while making a difference in the world with YouTube and to help those people that reach full-time achieve that success without losing their soul. Success without losing your soul, right? Which kind of goes back to that wellness. Like if you if you reach the top of the mountain, but your spiritual health, your family, like your physical, your, you know, your whole life's in total shambles, well, is that really success? We don't believe so. And we believe that you can achieve success on YouTube without losing your soul. That's a commitment to mission. And as we continue to talk about that mission, not just with you, But with our team, we are doing things, we have what's called the three big rocks in our company, and that's like every quarter we set three big goals. And the three big rocks might be like, we know we have a certain promotion coming up, that'll be marketing a product and that we want to hit certain sales with. We have some maybe administrative stuff, like let's clean up some, um, you know, courses and some backend things and our websites and pages and some different things to do. These are our rocks for uh, this past quarter. And then... Our most current third big rock, though, is acceleration of customer success. So it's also not just throwing a mission out there. It's commitment to the mission. Always asking, how can we be do better at helping our students and our customers? And in particular, I mean, you're watching our podcast, which is entirely free. We put out a lot of free content. Our biggest Death Star laser, kind of a funny word, Life Star laser, is on our customers to say, man, those are the ones we can serve at the highest levels, our Video Ranking Academy students, and how do we help them reach that target? What else can we do? You know, when you're trying to define and discern your calling, I've heard a couple tests you can do is what makes you sad? What makes you cry? What moves you emotionally? 
What makes you mad? What makes you frustrated about the world? What makes you frustrated with how a particular group of people are hurting or suffering? What makes you frustrated? What, what annoys you? You know, it's interesting. I started to discover my passion for video and tech and lighting by when I was a director of communications at a church and I was frustrated and mad when the sound was weird, when the lighting was wrong, when somebody, uh, the timing of the cues, when somebody would come out and they would start talking on the mic and the sound guy wasn't paying attention and he didn't unmute the mic, when there was echo. Like some people didn't even notice. The things that you notice, that probably is a good signal and indication of your mission and of your vision. So what are you fighting for? And maybe if you pick up a bigger fight, and you define who your enemy is, and you define what you want to accomplish at a deeper level, I believe you're going to have a greater impact over the next decade. And then what is the deeper purpose that is driving your business? Friend, I really believe that as you commit deeply to excellence, you commit deeply to wellness, you commit deeply to service, and you make a commitment to mission. And remember, these are just commitments. This doesn't mean perfection. This doesn't mean that you're maybe not even overwhelmed or intimidated by the mountain of excellence in front of you. You go, man, I got a lot to learn, so do I. You might sit down with a blank page and you go, I have no clue what my mission is. For me, I've been refining my mission and trying to capture a bigger vision for 10 years. The mission today is not what it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was like, can I get one person to view my video? You know, it's like, that was the mission. Like, can I, does this thing even work? I just got on camera. Then it was like, can we even just pay our bills with this? Can we even hit basic targets and accomplish, you know, providing for my wife and fighting for my wife and just our family? Now today, the mission's bigger and I'm like, can I provide and can we actually fund a company of 13 people that's doubling over the next year. You know, what can we do at this next level? And then it was like, would just one person buy my course and be able to go full time on YouTube? And now it's like we're getting all these testimonies and all these stories and all these people that are sharing the impact and the transformation that's happened to them through Video Ranking Academy. Now there's movement, now there's a momentum. And so we continue to commit to our vision and our mission, but even the vision and mission gets bigger over time. You don't even need to have the full picture yet. You won't have it yet. Just start planning on paper. Just start dreaming. Just start connecting with a deeper purpose and thinking about, man, what could be with my YouTube channel? What could I do? What can I accomplish? Who could I impact? How many lives could I change? Could I change just one person's life? Could I help just one person? Could I see one family change, one children's uh, life changed? Whatever your vision is, clarify your long-term vision. Keep working on it, your long-term mission. And define your principles, your principles that you live by that you wanna grow your YouTube channel by. And I really believe that over the next decade, right, that as you commit to excellence, you commit to wellness, you commit to service, and you commit to mission, that this will make you distinct in a sea of sameness on YouTube, in a sea of selfishness on YouTube, that when you come from the heart of service and when you come from the mission-driven, purpose-driven perspective, it'll help you build something that's a lot bigger than just YouTube. Hope these ideas served you today, and I'm excited to hear your feedback, whether that's in the comments or whether that's even leaving a review on the podcast. Maybe this episode stirred something in you. I would love to hear about that on our Apple iTunes podcast reviews area if you got something out of today's uh, podcast, and I appreciate you. Until next time, keep crushing it. Well, coming out of that session, I hope you are on fire. I hope you see the vision of what you can create using the power of YouTube. Now here on the podcast, every single week, we love to read the different reviews that you have. So make sure you rate and review this podcast over on Apple iTunes. That'll help us get it in front of other creators just like you. And today's review comes from Darkaholic. Darkaholic says, everything this coffee maker brings to the table is pure marketing and inspirational gold. After five years of building my videography business around marketing and entrepreneurial world, Sean Cannell is probably the only online video marketing specialist that stands out with his communication skills, knowledge bombs, and implementation strategies. Now, Darkaholic, right there, you've just said exactly what we want to bring to you in our value here at Think Media. It's all about helping you with the strategy 
strategies, helping you implement, and helping you take action to punch fear in the face and press record. So I'm so grateful that this podcast is bringing you value. Well, thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you on the next podcast. Thank you.